Hello everyone. You are on the Arbitrage Scanner channel. In this video, we will analyze what is arbitrage of perpetuals and analyze our product for this type of arbitrage. Let's start with a little description of what kind of product it is. For example, we have a Zem coin here, which is now on the Bybit exchange. This coin is traded on the spot. This coin is traded on the same exchange on futures. Now there is a small difference on the Zem coin. That is, here the price is 0.1 in 795, and here price is Zimatine. Here we can buy it a little cheaper on the spot, and then we take short position here on futures. So, we have a difference here between selling and buying price. It calls spread. And so we can wait for some time. Wait for the moment when the market maker levels the price, and the price will be the same on the spot and on the futures. It works the same way when we use several different exchanges. That is, there may be some kind of spread. For example, a spread on the GME coin between Gate and Binks. There is a price spread of 0.8%, and there is also a funding rate. Well, let's sort by price spread to make the picture look more beautiful. Here, look. Well, on the same coin, GME between HTX and Binks. So now we sort in the other direction. For example, STG, let's say, coin 27% spread. Alice coin 19% spread. And there are a lot of big coins. For example, Wave, 27% spread right now. This is the difference between futures exchanges, or the difference between spot and futures. We earn here on two mechanics. On the fact that we bought a little cheaper here. Here we take position a little higher in the short. That is, this is for the spot plus futures strategy. And we have a gap between prices. We are waiting for the price to level. At the same time, every 8 hours we get a percentage of funding. That is, we combine two trading strategies here. Two ways of arbitrage. This is arbitrage of funding and arbitrage of price spread. Accordingly, due to the fact that we combine it, this is a fairly profitable way for earnings. Let's make a small introduction to our product. We have a product, a screener for arbitrage perpetuals. This is a product that allows you to find all possible spreads that are on the exchanges. We support a huge number of exchanges. That is, more than 30 different centralized exchanges. That is, both spot exchanges and futures exchanges. For example, there is BitMart. It is indicated in the settings. BitMart, just the name is a spot version. BitMart in brackets futures is a futures version. There are also some small exchanges with which there may be good spreads. In addition, we have the ability to arbitrage with DEX futures or DEX exanges like Sushiswap, 1, 1 inch, Jupiter, and others. So, you can interact with it and our product shows where the most profitable spreads are, where there is an opportunity to make an arbitrage deal. That is, how, as I said, we can filter them with a funding rate and for the price spread. As a consequence, the price spread is not always so large. The more optimal deals are 1, 2, 3%. That is, these are more frequent transactions with which it is easiest to interact, because large coins, well, like waves, a large coin on which it is more likely that the price will level out in the near future, because the market maker works on it. Let's now move on to the overview of the product interface for arbitrage. We have a window here with the exchange settings. That is, you can choose the exchange with which you want to interact. That is, this is a general choice of exchanges. That is, you choose an exchange immediately and buy and sell. Also, if you need, you can in the expanded filters separately choose an exchange for purchase, separately choose an exchange for sale. That is, accordingly, I can, for example, now clean the filters, and I am only interested in the situation where I buy on spot Binance and short on some other future exchange. Well, or you can add, for example, future Binance. So, let's set a higher update speed. Now look, we only have Binance exchanges in our purchases. That is, these are all transactions that are in the method where we buy on Binance exchange, either on spot or on futures. 
That is, since I set it up that way. Accordingly, we can set it up for sale in the same way. You can use this filters if you already have a certain balance on these exchanges, and it is beneficial for you to interact like this. Next, we have the function of the whitelist and the function of the blacklist. That is, it allows us to remove or add some coins that we are interested in tracking. That is, in the whitelist we can enter some of these coins that are more interesting to us, and we will display only this coin, and not a bunch of other coins. We can do the same with the blacklist. Let's say, we want to remove the coin from here, and we put it in the blacklist, and, of course, it disappears. So it will not be displayed. We remove those coins with which we do not want to interact. Next, we have here the volume on which you can make a deal. That is, how is the volume generally calculated? How is the price spread calculated and the displayed prices? That is, we have an order book. The screener shows you the volume, the spread that you can take from the order book. That is, you, for example, buy a coin at 01793 at this price for a volume of $667. Here you sell exactly the same volume, also in an order book. And at the same time you get a specified spread for such a volume. For example, we can buy a JLM coin at this price, short at the price of ZU43 on the Bybit exchange, and at the 81%. And all this will be done for a volume of one e $355. But this is already less, for 693 So, no, there was another exchange. That is, the volume has changed a little bit. Well, that is... We can buy this volume from the order book. Here we bought it. Here we short on such a volume. We got such a price spread and such a difference in the funding rate. Next, here, you can indicate such a parameter as overall profit. That is, it is the total income, how much you make in total, from the price spread and from the spread on funding. That is, you can specify, for example, that we are not interested in a deal above 5% because they fall under the category of strange, 82%. It's not just like that. It's possible that the price leveling will take a very long time. Well, for example, we set there from 1 to 5%, and we have reduced the number of such notifications. Here you can find something more interesting. Well, for example, on the coin ape, a fairly large coin between Kraken and Deepcoin. Next, we have the volume here, and we also have an expanded list of settings here. That is, we can specify the purchase and sale exchange. Separately, we can specify the lifetime here. That is, the lifetime is this column. It indicates how long this price spread has been held. That is, if something has changed here, or if we have completely updated all the data, then the lifetime column is reset. For example, we can now find some coins from R&DR, which are already active for 18 hours. Well, of course, it is not very profitable for us to go into this spread because it has already existed for too long. So, let's sort it back. So, you can specify the most interesting spreads in seconds. Let's say, I'm interested in those spreads that exist for less than 5 minutes. It's sorted. It shows us the spreads we're interested in. Next, we will be interested in what is our funding profit filter. We have a rate profit and spread profit. You can indicate that you are only interested in a deal where you can earn a certain percentage of the profit. Well, since everything is filtered here, some of the most interesting deals have already disappeared. Let's remove some of the filters. Well, let's say we want the minimum funding profit to be 0.1%. So, now the filter is working. Here we have removed everything that is less than 0.1% of the funding profit. Also, an important nuance of the table. Here we display the last 1 in 200 pairs. You have to understand that here we display not all pairs are shown here. Only part is shown here. 
If you want to see the other pairs, you just need to change the settings. This is done on purpose, so as not to overload your browser. Because a lot of memory takes up the work of the table. And if we have some kind of jump in the number of arbitrage situations, it can be 15,000 and 20,000 situations. That is, right now, there are more than 3, 2, and 44 of them. But the number can change, and this can overload your browser. Therefore, be sure to set up filters so that it is comfortable to work and so as not to miss beneficial spreads. So, let's stop the update. Now let's take a look at working area. Firstly, this button here is responsible for the update. At the first login, you will have a do not update. You can select the update frequency 5, 10 or 15 seconds. We have this gear next to update button. We can press it. That is, we can change the location. Well, let's say we want to move this time. That is, we change the location of some columns that you do not want to see. You can just click on the eye, and they will disappear. This is quite convenient, so that you can adjust the sign for yourself. You can move this column. Some columns of the table that you don't want to see, you can easily hide them. Next, here we have the name of the coin, the pair of coins. It is indicated in the column by exchange, the exchange for the purchase. That is, if it is a spot exchange, it's simply indicated like that. If it is a futures exchange, it will be indicated in brackets with a note that it is futures. If it is a DEX exchange, the brackets will have the name of the network. Next, we have the exchange for sale. That is, well, of course, the price of the purchase and the price of the sale. So, we buy on this exchange on the spot, and we short on the futures exchange. Here, at the price of Zetheater 83, we buy at the price of Zetheater 84 we short, and we get spreads at 33%. The only thing here is that there can be another symbol, and therefore it may display a little bit wrong. Next, we have funding for the purchase. So, let's sort this more correctly. Here we have the funding for buying and the funding for selling indicated. The percentage of funding is specified and the time of funding accrual is specified. Funding accrual time is the sell funding rate. And then we have the volume here. The volume is indicated at the top in tokens. At the bottom, it is indicated in dollars. The next lifetime is the lifetime of the spread. That is, how long has the spread appeared? How much time does it exist in principle? Accordingly, the longer this time, if it is too long, it is disadvantageous for us. It means that the price has not equalized for a long time. Next we have the funding rate profit. This is the profit you will get from funding if you enter this deal. That is, buy on one exchange and short on another. And then it's spread profit. This is the difference between the price of the purchase and the sale that you will receive. And the overall profit. This is your total earnings from one funding calculation and with the ideal alignment of the price between two exchanges. That is, between the exchange of purchase and sale. In general, the function is quite simple, but very effective. And one more point that we did not deal with you. So we have three main strategies, three variations of what can be used. Futures plus futures allows us to use arbitrage between two futures exchanges. Let's put an update. In this case, we buy on the futures exchange and we sell on the futures exchange. So, we can buy on max at Zone Twitter 99 and short at Z3 on HDX. At the same time, we will get such a funding and such price spread profit. Why is this strategy profitable for us? 
If we use two futures exchanges, we can use leverage. Here it is indicated with the leverage x1. If we use x5, we will get x5 more. But we do not recommend using the leverage at all. It is better to work with x1 because it is safer. The more the leverage, the more you will risk. For example, if you use x5 leverage here, you will get 0.25% rather than 0.5% for funding. Further, we have a strategy with spot plus futures. That is, you buy on the spot and stand in short on the futures. This strategy is one of the most stable, with which it will be easier to interact with beginners. And the future plus spot strategy. There are several variations of how you can use this strategy. One of the most effective strategies that you can use here is when you have some tokens on the balance. That is, you already had them. You sell tokens on the spot and at the same time buy a coin on futures with leverage x1. Let's give an example. This is an example of an ATX coin between Qcoin and Ox. We have a negative funding rate here. This means that funding will be charged for a long position, and there is also a price difference. That is, you had some coins. You sold some amount of coin for 0 0.7. Let's say you had 100 coins, you sold them for $70, or 1,000 coins sold for $700. And here you bought 1,000 coins for 689. That is, accordingly, you have a difference in price spread here. That is, you, from the fact that you just moved the coins from the spot to the futures, you earned on the price spread, and at the same time, every 8 hours you will be charged a minus rate of funding. So, you just type in whitelist the coins that are interesting to you, which you already have, and just track the appearance of the situation with your coins, according to the futures plus spot strategy, and earn on it. Well, you can also set up a telegram notification. I think we have covered everything in detail. If you have any questions, you can write them either to the VIP manager or write them under this video and our manager will answer them. And that's all for today. Bye everyone.